people are always hiding how they feel or they eventually stop being aware of how they feel about you, right? They become acclimated to you. Or as they get to know you in the beginning when you're first dating them, they tend to hide their emotions as a strategy. But then as they get as they get to know you and as they get to like you, something happens is that they become complacent, right? It's kind of similar to life, where in the beginning, life is extremely vibrant. Life is amazing. Everything in life, everything is life is new. But then as you get older, you get used to the same stimulus. Now you need new things to create more stimulation. But in the beginning, usually you were aware and experienced things at a deeper level, right? Now, as you grow older, you have moments when life causes a situation that makes you pay deeper attention to life, that makes you appreciate life, that makes you appreciate the little things. And this is where I'm talking about today. It's not really about manipulating people, even though it kind of is, but it isn't at the same time. It's about helping you understand how to keep the people around you consistently aware of how valuable you are in their life. Because a lot of the times we make mistakes that causes them to take us for granted. That's just how it is, right? Or sometimes they're hiding how they feel because of their pride. And sometimes you got to implement some dirty strategies to get them to open up. Right. I mean, I mean, let's just be honest. And this comes down to the first point, the fear of loss. This, let me tell you something, man. This doesn't even apply to just dating. You can, you can have a family member who doesn't respect you, who continually disrespects you. And what you have to do is leave them completely cut off communication. Let them know that there are consequences for their behavior. And a lot of the times people who stop talking to family members, they will tell you that maybe there's a chance that this person might never talk to you again because their ego is that strong. But sometimes if you stop talking to them and stop interacting with them, especially if you're right in this situation, a lot of the times they come back and, they're, and, and they come back a little bit more humbled and they try to fix, fix the situation, right? Time, the time that passes causes people to think about the situation and see themselves in a completely different light. Especially when you stop talking to them, and, and especially if you pulled away, right? That wakes up whatever emotions they had about you that was latent. Whatever emotions they had about you that, that fell asleep, your absence will wake them up, right? And it is not just the fact that you are continually leaving people. It's just like I talked about in, in yesterday's video. It's just the willingness to, 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 to stop the communication if, if it gets way too disrespectful just the willingness the threat of it right um so people will always take you for granted when they feel like you'll never leave right and this happens with family members right and not just relationships where the reason why family members a lot of the times treat each other like shit is because they know they're always going to be there they know they have more shots to get forgiving and that's the beauty of having a family but that's a problem with having a family sometimes because the people who take you for, the, for granted the most are the ones you love the most. And this is where it's your responsibility to set the pace. Even though it's your family, and we're not talking about family here, um, but I'm just using family because I'm not, I know a lot of people out there love to moralize my videos, right? So I'm using family as a way to get this point across to some, some, some of you hard-headed people out there. Um, f especially if a family member is being disrespectful, a lot of people won't leave because it's family. Fuck that. Fuck that family member, man. If they keep being disrespectful, if, if, if when you try to talk, they always create chaos to avoid a conversation, you leave them, right? That family member doesn't appreciate you, doesn't value you. And sometimes the only way for you to let them know, to let them realize, hey, if I leave, you know you're going to be miserable. You know you're going to be sad. You know that you need me in your life. The only way for you to let them know that is to get the fuck out, to leave. Plain and simple, man. Um... And this happens a lot, right? During moments of disrespect, moments of clear injustice, you have to wake them up from their complacency. If not, like the like the world, it's like if not, the relationship with you will be like a world without death. A world without death is a world that's completely bland, no flavor, no fun, completely empty inside. Right? Why? Because you need death to appreciate things. You need death to, to appreciate your family. You need end. You need the end. Things need to end in order for you to truly appreciate things. And human nature is to fall under the illusion of permanence, object permanence. To think that people will always be there, that people will never leave you, that, that the world that you live in today will stay the same. 
But when you get that jolt of reality, that foretaste of death, that realization of the, the ultimate separation and disintegration, a lot of times it jolts you, it wakes you up and allows you to see how beautiful and amazing this person you're taking for granted. And if they never felt that intense love for you, which most likely they felt it in the beginning, I could promise you the foretaste of your absence, the foretaste of you leaving them will jolt them to, to will be like an adrenaline pump straight to their heart. It will wake them up. And what you'll notice in people when they wake up through your absence, it's just that they're more romantic. They're more emotional. They do things for you. They give you what you want. And it's not the fact that you do this often, but that you just, like I said, it's just a willingness. It really is the willingness. Now, if they gotta make you, if they call you bluff, fuck them. Honestly, if they call you bluff, then that means they don't respect you. You gotta pull away. Let them know you're not messing around, right? Because it's just people like some people are really like that. Like it, it's like kids who don't who don't take care of their toys, right? I was like that, where my mom had a, had a not buy me toys for like a few months to help me realize that I just cannot be destroying my toys. My, she called me the destructor, <laughs> right? So that's the first thing, it's your absence. Your absence will always wake people up as to how they truly. Anyways, if you, by the way, if you guys wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one and apply these strategies in your life to attract someone in your life, um, and you wanna talk to me on how to apply these, um, click in the description down below or scan the QR code right here where it says work with me one-on-one, -on -one, and then I'll teach you guys how to apply these strategies like on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, if you're, if you want, if you're dating someone and they don't, and you don't know how they feel about you, just give me a call and I'll be able, and you'll be able to book a call. It's pretty easy. Um, you guys can even book a call with me today. Um, and yeah, man, just, and people, people think I don't exist. I do exist, people. I'm a real person. So if you want to get on the phone with me, just click on the description down below or else they're going to leave you. Time is the next thing. You can leave someone and they might be happy. But see them a few days, weeks, or months later. A lot of the times, time reveals how you feel about things. For example, denial. We're going to talk about this later in the video, but denial, right? You could be in denial about something, about the fact that maybe you're in a cult, for example. <laughs> um, and a lot of the times, no matter how much you convince someone that they're in a cult, they can't you can't convince them. But then over time, if you separate them from the cult members, over time, time will literally change the memories. Times can sometimes make memories, create more denial, like a child who's, you know, by someone who's a perv, right? It could create a denial of it. And so in time will literally like protect them, create a protective layer of, psych of psychological defenses. But also sometimes time literally, just like everything erodes, the, the psychological defenses that you have made to protect yourself psychologically erodes over time. And, the, and that denial could be a suppression of emotion that you feel for this person. Like when, when, when you take them for granted, there's literally a layer that, that, that suppresses what you feel about them so that you could do other things. But that layer gets dissolved over time like anything, you know, everything this, this compo decomposes. That layer decomposes and it reveals to them how they feel about you. And sometimes some people, this is something that you just cannot predict. An example is that if you are raised by a minute some if you were in a manipulative relationship a lot of the times you don't know you were until you get out of it and then sometimes you don't notice it in the first week but then over over time time will literally reveal how they re, how you really feel about that and this is where no contact comes into place this is why no contact is so powerful because no contact embraces that one um that one thing which is time and they may think they don't love you they may think they don't like you but dry age that feeling go ahead and dry age that shit put it out there let time pass and you'll notice that that thing that they think that they don't like you they'll notice all of a sudden one day they'll wake up and they're having fantasies about you and this is what i mean when they'll wake up and then all of a sudden they'll notice that they start thinking about you and having mental movies with you and the mental movies is with eye contact where you're making eye contact with them all of a sudden they'll notice they feel this fuzzy feeling inside and the reason why is because that feeling was in gestation that feeling when you left started a, a biochemical process that created love sometimes that's all you need sometimes you need that distance and so the 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 the, the, the phase of no contact a lot of the time cre um, um, allows people to almost like ferment um, um, marinate in those feelings it's almost like fermentation it, it create it, it that feeling can only be created and fermented in your absence right it's like 
you're with a family member, they fucked up. They don't think they fucked up. But then when you leave, it, time, as long as you don't contact them, time will do the dirty work for you. Time will, will show them the errors of their way. Time and isolation too, also, right? But it's truly a powerful thing, right? Because a lot of the times we sort of try to pressure people to see your point of view. Sometimes you just need time. It's like COVID. COVID, the more we are away from COVID, the more we see that we were right. <laughs> the people who didn't get vaccinated are fucking happy as shit, <laughs> right? People who, who were pressuring people to, to get the jab, start they start they're finally waking up and seeing yeah okay i guess we went a little bit too far oh all those friends we lost because they didn't want to get a job oh that was kind of dumb of me oh oh all the judgment where people were, were literally saying that if you didn't get, if you didn't get vaccinated they wouldn't mind seeing you die like if you were in the hospital doctors were literally saying they wouldn't see doctors of um, clients without the shot right and they were justifying it time passes and all of a sudden that looks stupid they were saying during that time that kids needed the jab, even though when you got the the, 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 the the thing, right, you still needed it. Time showed that if you got it, you don't need it. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes you don't need to argue. Let time pass. Let, 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 them, let them see how they really feel by letting them be alone with those feelings. Time has a very weird paradoxical effect where it could fuzzle, muzzle feelings more through denial especially if it happens when you're a kid or sometimes you just don't or sometimes you just forget about that period of time or sometimes it clarifies it's really hard to tell which one is which which one is going to happen unless you just so remember with no absence with no death with no fear of losing you with no end in the relationship because relationships need to have an end everything thing has an end it start in the beginning without that end in mind they won't appreciate you at the level that you need to be appreciated there's not going to be no love, no appreciation. The next thing is competition. Competition will make, will intensify whatever they feel about you. Will intensify whatever emotions they feel about that situation. You gotta understand, desire is a social thing. When you want something, a lot of the times you want it because other people want it. And a lot of marketers, I used to do marketing, they understand that if they get somebody who's attractive, enjoying the product that they're that they're doing that they're taking. A lot of the times people will literally buy that product even if it has negative side effects simply because they see somebody else wanted it it's like the, the drug commercial um are you sad did you ever blink well then you need this drug and as the woman is happy they were like by the way the side effects is that you might die you might you might get crucified you might you you, you might get boiled alive and the, and the woman is taking that drug and she's happy right i know I, i'm giving a bad example but the point is is that seeing other people want something makes you want it Right. And a lot of the times, like I said, complacency hits everything. It is rust. It is it is the atrophy of every relationship. It is a normal, normal thing. But that could be controlled to a certain degree. And sometimes life naturally forces you to appreciate things. The problem is, is that, like I said, a lot of the times we try to filter out life. We try to stop people from experiencing natural things. And this thing is conflict and competition especially if you're afraid of conflict, especially if you don't, if you fear getting, if you fear letting them know that there's other people who want you. Right? A lot of the times when we date, we try to remove the competition. We try to let them know that they're the ours. We try to let them know that we won't do something. And so sometimes we go way too far and make them feel like you're there. The, they're the only one competing for you. Well, even though it's nice on paper, but realistically, tell me any other area of life where that increases the desire for that thing. It doesn't. It's just your ego. You, if you have competition, you don't have to be telling people you're banging the whole football team, right? No, but just be, just don't hide it. it it'll come out, right? Like it, it, you don't have to go out of your way to show a girl all the, you know, all the chicks you've been with, but they can sense it. It's something that people can sense if you don't try to hide, and 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 that's what I'm talking about. Is don't hide the reality that some people want you. Don't hide the reality that you have friends of the opposite sex. Just don't hide that. If you don't hide it, it'll come through and it'll register in their heads and it'll create that competition. It's just that simple. Just don't. And above all, if they're toxic and they don't want you to have friends of the opposite sex, unless you have a history of cheating, you got to you gotta fight against that. Even though I know it's like suspicious, right? But you, you got to have friends of the opposite sex. I, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, you don't have to be buddy buddies with them, but have co-workers who are the opposite sex you see this is where a lot of people try to go out of their way to remove that part of their lives and i am encouraging you don't go out of your way to show it 
but don't go out of, way, out of your way to hide it. It's actually good. It's like bad bacteria. I mean, it's like, it's like bacteria. Some bacteria are necessary. Some problems in life are necessary, like death. Death is necessary because if you, people don't die, you won't appreciate life. If people don't die, there'll never be new people born because older people usually are the ones in power, right? It'll be completely a geo, um, geatric society where the young people are suppressed. I don't know where the fuck that came from. Um, and that, actually, that's the type of world we live in. Don't you notice that people are living longer? And as a result, the people in power are more older. The best basketball players are older. LeBron, Steph Curry, the 37, 30, and 40, right? Baseball players, everyone is living longer. So it's becoming more of like a ge geriatric society. Um, the next one is being there for them during moments when they're, they need help, right? During low moments. Being there for them will will bring out their true feelings for you and this is how because a lot of the time the next thing is being unpredictable unpredictability right honestly this is honestly the best way to do it because when you become unpredictable you piss people off right um you frustrate people and an example is like the one time i told you guys about how i was dating this girl and she just had this weird habit where sometimes she just didn't want to stay close to me i mean i don't mind but I just found that weird. I'm like, bitch, what's wrong with you? Do I smell, right? And she'd be like, no. But but the fact that I couldn't predict when she wanted physical distance frustrated the living shit out of me, right? And it showed to me how much I liked her. You get what I'm saying? Her unpredictable behavior, or which is really a surprise, right? Unpred when your reaction to the unpredictable a lot of the times causes you to... to to, it's, it's, it's like when something surprising happens and you piss yourself, right? It's, it's kind of like that, right? Like it's so it's so sudden, so sudden that it relaxes certain parts of your body and, and it causes you to piss on yourself, right? It's, I know it's a, shit, it's a shitty example or it makes you shit on yourself, right? <laughs> but it's pretty much the point where it's like a guy, you scare him and he, he acts tough. But when you scare him, he screams like, oh my God, right? It's kind of like, wait a minute, what the fuck? You're like, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I usually don't scream that way. I'm like, that was involuntary. That was an involuntary scream, my man, right? So it's kind of like that. Unpredict how people react to the unpredictable is really a reflection of how they feel. So, for example, if you cancel on someone, it's just an example, and they're having the worst week of their lives, their reaction to your unpredictability will be, you, you're going to notice there's something wrong with them. There's, they're, they're going through something, right? People cannot hide how they feel or, or people cannot brace themselves when something that they don't see coming hits them right in the face, right? When you get knocked out, usually you get knocked out by the punches you don't see. Unpredictable behaviors are just are like punches you don't see. It forces people to reveal how they feel. So pulling away, random breaking up, like I don't recommend this, but I'm just saying like, like if some, let's, uh, honestly, if they're taking you for granted and you hold it in, that's an example, right? They take you for granted and you hold it in, they're not being romantic. And then one day you wake up and you're like, fuck this, person i'm leaving them right you leave and they didn't see it coming because the whole time you were needy desperate and so even so what's funny is that your needy behavior actually benefits you because it makes your breaking up even more forceful and more powerful get what i'm saying so it's kind of like they create an image of you there's no way this person is leaving me boom you leave all of a sudden oh that hits even harder people Okay, that what you don't see coming is what hits you harder. This is unpredictable that I'm talking about. This unpredictability will always keep people on their toes. And it's not that you're unpredictable in an exhausting way. You don't do this often. But unpredictability can also be positive things. Where one day you give somebody a gift that just don't they just don't expect. You know what I'm saying? Where we're <laughs> sorry. Oh man. <laughs> Okay, okay, that was good. Uh, where, where, where sometimes you give people a gift that they don't expect, right? It, it, it causes people to feel or intensify whatever positive feelings they have for you, or you give them a positive surprise. It's not just the negative, right? But unpredictable behavior, unpredictable positive behavior, unpredictable negative behavior always brings out how you truly feel. For example, you could act like you are not afraid, right? And that you're a tough person, but let's just let me give you a a, a diagnosis you don't expect, a, a cancer diagnostic, right? Whatever, if it's if you don't see it coming, it hits you harder, and whatever fear you have inside of you will come out like a like a thunderbolt. Like so 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 this is why being predictable, unpredictable is so powerful. 
because it, it you the experience with the unpredictable is always more alive it's always more interesting it's always more emotional if you're boring as fuck it's because you're just too predictable you're just too predictable you gotta apply some unpredictability some positive unpredictability and some negative unpredictability and it'll bring out how they feel about you right it's like it's like when you're you're asking a woman to marry you and she doesn't see it coming that reaction because it's unpredictable will reveal how she feels about you just how that is you fire someone and they don't see it coming if they really wanted to get fired they'll be happy if they didn't see it coming they'll cry unpredictability always unpredictable actions always bring out to the surface how they feel and the last one is rationality speaking to people in a rational way when they're in love with you is a hey, they fucking hate that shit they hate that shit uh, i mean if you want to piss someone off when they're in love with you talk to them in a rational way if you want to make somebody happy and they're and they're not in love with you talk to them in an irrational way in other words you live three three miles away and and and, and you're in love and the person says nah man you know what we can't be together you live three miles away i work all the time i can't do this speaking rationally even though you're making sense it'll piss them off it'll piss them off because they're in denial of that reality being in love is a certain level of denialism of reality right like you say oh we'll figure it out you get what i'm saying that that's what the romanticism of love but it's also the irrationality of love and a lot of people find extremely pleasurable they find that that irrationality extremely pleasurable and i get it but the problem with that is that it just creates a lot of problems it creates more problems than good and one of the things that it creates is that when somebody makes sense they get closed off in other words hey don't date this person they're convict they're a convicted murder i don't care i love them hey man what the fuck are you talking about don't date this person this person cheated on the last 10 people no i love them they'll get mad at your irrationality in fact your irrationality will push them towards them rationality reveals how they feel so so if you're talking to someone and you want to know how they feel speak rational to them you know what man you you know i'm, I'm we shouldn't be together I, I just you just got out of a relationship i work a lot i don't think how this is going to work out what you will notice people who like you will put will protest what you will notice people who like you will say something or get in the way or do something or try to argue the point and try to and, and even though it doesn't make sense you just notice that they'll just try to convince you otherwise but when they do don't love you they're, they're just gonna agree with you because they don't love you enough to be irrational like i always say there's no reason to be with people people are annoying as hell why would you even decide to be with someone unless you're not thinking straight that's what being in love is people that you think you know when you watch fucking oxes fucking each other right you're like how the f that ox is into that well because he's an ox there's emotions stop thinking straight there's no reason to be putting your stuff inside of another thing it makes no sense but because love and 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 and, and all of those hormones pushes you towards it you need hormones to make you do that shit people okay but rationality right so one of the ways is that you'll notice you're dating people and it's been a few months speak to them rationally you know hey like for example it's like when clients tell me they don't want to the person they're dating doesn't want a relationship what should i do what should speak to them rationally if you want to know how they feel speak rationally what do you mean by that okay and look it's been three months it seems like we're not going nowhere i appreciate it you're a great person but i just don't think we're on the same page you know and i think it's best that we just end it that is rational somebody who loves you will they'll, they'll explode they'll say no this makes no sense i'll like you let's work it out i know you have 10 kids and three baby mamas but let's work it out somebody who doesn't like you will say you know what you're totally right um, 10 kids not my thing um i totally agree with you plus you're doing this with your life i'm doing this with my life it doesn't work it may not work out but sometimes you might you might break up with them and they might say yes to that but then a few weeks later they might change their minds right so you know you might it, it, this is the only caveat but but this is how you bring out people's emotions speak rationally to them and you'll realize that they really might like you more than you expected them to like you. It's kind of surprising. And the reason why is because a lot of times we people live in their own fantasies. And the, and the, and and the, the and how they see you is built up out of emotions. It you know the bricks that they use to build an image of you is not real. So whenever you bring reality, you talk to them with reality, 
you're literally bringing down this edifice they've created out of imaginary emotions and it's not real and they can sense it but they don't want to get out of it because accepting that is what they have or who they know is not who they really think it is is more painful than being in denial right so love has a certain level of denialness love has a certain level of 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 of, de of delusion and you test how delusioned they are how much in the spell they are of you by being rational by throwing a brick of rationality and seeing whether or not it hits them right but when 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 it, it, it's honestly kind of fascinating because because i was reading about politics and how how your politician might be the worst person in the world or let's just say you got scammed right and and and, and you got scammed or you're in a cult and you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to be in that cult right you know what's crazy? Just because you spend so much money, you will dig yourself deeper. And you want to know why? Because accepting that you spent a hundred thousand dollars and that you were lied to and that you're an idiot is a, such a detriment to your self-esteem that you rather lie to yourself than bring out those emotions that you could just sense underneath you. It's like it's like your house is on top of a volcano. You can sense the heat, but you know that if you but but you know it's a lot more work. To, to get out of that place than to just stay in there in denial. A lot of people will rather not accept those feelings, not look at those feelings. It's like when you're broke, you don't want to look at your bank account. It hurts more to look at your bank account. So you just rather be in denial, right? Love has a certain aspect, certain level of denialism that the more you they love you, the more you think you are this amazing person. And there's nothing wrong with that. Honestly, that's what it is to love people. It's a, it's, a, it's a denial of reality. And, and that denial causes people to get closer to each other. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, come on, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my mom loves me, right? She thinks I'm a nice guy. But truth is, I might be worse than she imagines me to be. You know what I'm saying? That's what love is. Unconditional love. Even if you're Hitler, I love you. If that's your mom, right? If that, you know, if that's your kid, right? <laughs> Here comes Hitler again on this channel, right? So that's why it's when you bring rationality, you are butting up against psychological defenses and what will happen is that they'll get angry they'll get pissed off and, and it, it, they'll double down on, on what they believe right they'll double down simply because you're, you're you're hitting something that if they accept that they're wrong it'll hurt deeply so they understand this so they rather deal with this pain and be in denial than accept the truth and see reality it's like for example like pe women who were in cults right a lot of women were in cults and there's this cult that, that, that he says like I'll massage you to release spiritual pain right what he's really is is essaying women assaulting women right and a lot of women will say it worked simply because if they really are honest with themselves they'll say they've been they've been assaulted art you know what I'm saying they'll say they've been assaulted so sometimes for them it's better to kick the can down the road than to really look at themselves in the mirror and realize that they've been a victim of somebody who lie to them and who use their vulnerability to, to take, take advantage of them it's honestly it's honestly one of the things i've been re like just studying denial lately and it's truly it's truly a, a, a the way it feels it just feels like there's a huge party underneath you and you're on top of it you can hear the sounds you can hear the people you, you might even sense the heat but you rather just go to the other floor and each time you keep doing that the party gets louder and louder and a lot of people, and, and, and the more you deny it, the more you believe it, but the more you're the, but, but the more in denial you are. And it's truly something that, that could hurt you in the long run. So a lot of you guys have been asking me, how can I purchase all of your courses in one go? Well, if you guys want to purchase all of them, you guys can join the Mindful Attraction University, people. Yeah, that's right. And in this, you'll be able to access all of my courses for $3.99. Initially, if you purchase all of my courses, Emotional Mastery, Psychological Game of Attraction, my new course, The Feminine Woman, Natural Chemistry, Charisma Blueprint, Nice Girl, you guys can purchase all of it for $600. But with the bundle deal, you guys can purchase it for $3.99. Or you guys can purchase it in three easy payments of $125, people. Yeah, that's right. Or you guys can purchase it with the bonuses. So you, not only do you get the courses, but the bonuses. And that comes down to $7.99. Or four easy and mindful payments of $1.99. Now, these bonuses are not regular bonuses. These bonuses are legit, almost like courses within a course, right? 
So you guys can just click on the description down below and explore the types of bonuses. For example, I have bonuses on how to get over your ex, um, how to become more creative, um, how to, well, especially in the feminine woman, I have a bonus about how to penetrate the mind and how to speak in a way that gets people to do what you want them to do. Like it's honestly one of the craziest sections that I've ever made because most of these courses people are, I come up with those ideas in meditation retreats. Nobody goes to the extent that I go. I go to meditation retreat to create these courses. There's a 14 day money back guarantee. If you don't like it, just ask me for the money back within 14 days and I'll give you all the money back. Father Alex has never rejected a money back um, offer if I offered it. So, and if you guys already purchased one of my courses, for example, and you guys want to get the bonuses while getting a discount, you know what I'm saying? I have discount codes for people who purchase my courses. So if you purchase my courses, just send me a private message. Or if you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll give you a big discount for the courses. And there I can help all of you guys. Understand that this is a movement. Most people never knew this type of knowledge before. And I am trying to empower women across the world and liberate them from these negative and one-sided relationships through these courses. So hopefully you guys can spread the message and help other people out. And I'll see you guys inside. Or else, I'm closing it.